From a GDP growth rate of 4.3% in 2021 and a GDP leap from 1.493.08 billion in 2020 to 2.240.42 billion in 2022, Russia's global GDP share is set to fluctuate, peaking slightly in 2024 before a gradual decline. Amidst sanctions and geopolitical chess, Russia's GDP has been a roller coaster of rises and falls. With a predicted shrinkage to 1.8% growth in 2025, what will the next five years hold? Welcome to Fun Financial Insights, where we turn the complex world of economics into an adventure. In today's episode, we're setting our sights on Russia, a nation wrapped in sanctions and geopolitical intrigue, with a history rich in economic resilience and strategy, what does the crystal ball reveal about Russia's financial landscape in the next five years? Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia's GDP has seen a roller coaster ride, peaking at $2.292 trillion in 2013 before sanctions bid into its growth. Fast forward to today, and the question on everyone's mind is, can Russia innovate its way out of economic isolation? Or will it return to the shadows of its Soviet past? Stay tuned as we dissect the past, analyze the present, and forecast the future of Russia's economy. After the curtain fell on the Cold War, Russia embarked on a quest to insulate its economy from the chill of international sanctions. A strategic maneuver like amassing gold is one of them. By 2020, Russia's gold reserves skyrocketed to a historic high, making it the fifth largest sovereign holder of gold worldwide. This precious metal serves as a bulwark against currency volatility and sanctions, offering a shimmering layer of financial security. There have also been a lot of new trade alliances that would make more countries dependent on Russia. Russia's trade strategy has been a balancing act between diversification and fostering dependence. It has cultivated new trade alliances, particularly with China, which has grown to become Russia's top trading partner. Yet it's also been accused of leveraging energy exports to create a web of dependency, particularly in Europe. Although the ruble has been on a wild ride with sanctions sending it into free fall at times, but Russia has fought back with a de-dollarization strategy, reducing its reliance on the U.S. dollar and shifting towards other currencies in international trade. This move aims to cushion the ruble from the sanction sting. In the digital domain, Russia has been pushing to develop its own tech sector, aiming to reduce reliance on Western technology. Initiatives like the Skolkova Innovation Center are testament to this drive. But with sanctions tightening like a noose, will these measures provide the economic oxygen Russia needs to breathe freely in the global market? Keep watching as we find out. One of the pivotal moments that reshaped Russia's economic destiny was the annexation of Crimea. This bold geopolitical move sent shockwaves through the global community and triggered a cascade of economic consequences that put a test to some of Russia's post-Cold War strategies. The year 2014 marked a turning point when Russia reclaimed Crimea. The world watched in awe, but the economic toll was immediate. Western sanctions clamped down, targeting key sectors of Russia's economy. The price tag? A staggering $100 billion, over 4.2% of Russia's GDP at the time. But the Kremlin didn't just absorb the blow, it fought back, pouring billions into Crimea's infrastructure, including a $3.7 billion bridge connecting the peninsula to mainland Russia. Sanctions aimed to isolate Russia economically, but they also spurred a domestic resilience. Russia's response was multifaceted, from boosting local industries to finding alternative markets. Yet, the sanctions' bite was sharp, with estimates suggesting they could add up to losses of 8% of the GDP won. The ruble's value plummeted and foreign investment retreated as the economic landscape shifted beneath Russia's feet. Russia is experiencing similar or even worse issues today with the invasion of Ukraine. Russia's energy sector, particularly oil and gas, accounts for over 60% of its exports and about 30% of its total GDP. Russia's energy strategy to 2035 reveals a nation betting heavily on fossil fuels, despite global trends towards decarbonization. Russia plans to maintain, even boost its oil production and increase gas and coal exports over the next 15 years. 
This strategy isn't just about sustaining an economy, it's a geopolitical move designed to keep the West hooked on Russian energy. While Europe accelerates its green energy transition, Russia's response has been twofold. On one hand, it's been accused of attempting to slow the shift by promoting its fossil fuels. On the other, it's faced with the unintended consequences of its actions. Europe is reducing its dependence on Russian energy, a shift hastened by geopolitical tensions. The stakes are high and the numbers are stark, with Europe's green energy policies potentially cutting deep into Russia's export figures, Russia's economic future hangs in the balance. As we peer into the future, the question remains, can Russia adapt its energy strategy to a world that's turning green? Will it find new markets or will it double down on its fossil fuel assets? Under Putin's leadership, Russia has been a significant centralization of economic control reminiscent of the USSR. The state has taken a dominant role in key industries, particularly in energy, with giants like Gazprom leading the charge. To paint a picture, here is a summary of what Putin's actions has led to economically. Russia's GDP has grown under Putin, but it's faced fluctuations due to various crises and sanctions. The state share in the economy has increased significantly, with state-owned enterprises playing a pivotal role. For instance, SOEs account for over 60 percent percent of Russia's GDP. The Kremlin has also been known to nationalize key assets, especially when Western companies have pulled out of Russia due to geopolitical tensions. Pay attention, we'll still discuss each of these in detail. One of the most notable examples of Putin's centralization was the state's takeover of Yukos Petroleum. Once Russia's largest oil company, Yukos was dismantled after its CEO, Mikhail Khodorkovsky, was arrested on charges of fraud and tax evasion. The company's assets were absorbed by state-controlled entities, setting a precedent for the government's approach to private business. While centralization has helped Putin to have a hold on the Russian economy despite sanctions, it has also had mixed effects. On one hand, it has allowed Putin to exert considerable control over the economy and use it as a tool for geopolitical influence. On the other hand, it's raised concerns about efficiency and innovation, as the heavy hand of the state can stifle the entrepreneurial spirit that drives economic growth. Looking ahead, however, the most important thing is, will it work to create a robust economy that can stand sanctions and global shifts? And now, a quick pause in our journey through Russia's economic flow. If you're finding this expedition intriguing, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for more financial detective work. As we venture deeper into the heart of Russia's economic strategies, we stand at a crossroads of history and policy. With a GDP that's been a roller coaster of highs and lows, and a centralization strategy that's tightening its grip, Russia's economic narrative is as complex as it is compelling. In the next chapter of our saga, we'll explore the shadowy dance between the state and private businesses, where oligarchs walk a tightrope between power and peril. We'll uncover the fates of those who dare to defy the Kremlin's economic script and the seismic shifts that occur when Western brands retreat from Russian soil. The arrival of big Western companies once symbolized Russia's open doors to global commerce. From fast food chains like McDonald's to tech giants like Apple, these brands were not just businesses, they were emblems of a new era. But as tensions escalated, these symbols of Western consumerism began to shudder their Russian operations. McDonald's, an icon of Western capitalism in Russia since the 1990s, made headlines with its departure. The fast food giant temporarily closed its restaurants in March and by May announced a permanent exit. The company sold its 850 restaurants to a local entity which rebranded them as Vakuzno Itachka, aiming to expand to 1,000 locations. Finnish dairy manufacturer Bello was among the first to leave, citing ethical reasons and condemning Russia's actions. The company's exit was swift, occurring just two weeks after the invasion began. The retreat of over 1,000 companies has left gaping holes in the Russian economy. Losses from these departures are estimated between $200 and $240 billion, impacting sectors from oil and gas to food and finance. The exodus has led to job losses and could potentially spiral into Russia's worst economic crisis since the Soviet Union's collapse. 
In the wake of this retreat, some Western brands have found new life through rebranding. Former Starbucks outlets reopened under the name Stars Coffee, while other companies like Reebok and Coca-Cola have seen their products continue under different names and ownership. Behind the numbers of the companies leaving lies the human cost. Stories abound of workers like Alexander, who, after the closure of his factory job, faced the collapse of his career dreams as the aviation industry took a nosedive due to sanctions and company withdrawals. The service sector, once a beacon of employment, is now a shadow of its former self, with job vacancies vanishing like mirages. Looking five years ahead, the landscape appears bleak. The Russian economy could lose human capital at a rate higher than in the 1990s, with significant brain drain and a potential backslide to an economy reminiscent of those turbulent times. The decree of acquisition in a bold move, President Vladimir Putin signed a confidential decree giving the Russian government the power to buy Western companies at a significant discount. This decree is a clear signal of the state's intent to prioritize its interests over private ownership, especially in the face of Western sanctions. The price of defiance businesses in Russia are increasingly facing a stark choice, sell to the government or risk the consequences. The Kremlin has been known to force foreign companies to sell their assets to Russian buyers at a 50% discount with an additional exit fee of at least 10% of that transaction value. This aggressive strategy has left many companies with little choice but to comply or face the possibility of nationalization. For Russian oligarchs, the pressure to align with the state's economic directives has been intense. Those who have refused to sell have often faced dire consequences. While specific numbers and cases are shrouded in the secrecy of the Kremlin politics, the message is clear. Defiance can lead to downfall. The list of potential targets for nationalization includes giants like Volkswagen, Apple, Ikea, and McDonald's, among others. The nationalization drive is a double-edged sword. While it may temporarily preserve jobs for tens of thousands of Russians employed by those companies, it also poses significant economic harm to the businesses involved. The long-term effects on the economy are yet to be fully understood. The international community has been watching closely with some countries warning of further sanctions or legal action if Russia proceeds with nationalization. This could lead to even more economic isolation for Russia. The fate of nationalized companies is uncertain. Some may continue to operate under new management, while others may falter without the expertise and brand recognition of their parent companies. Compounding the issue is the brain drain phenomenon. Since the conflict began, there has been a mass exodus of young, educated Russians seeking opportunities abroad. By some estimates, 80% of those who have left are college-educated, and 86% are under the age of 45. This loss of human capital is devastating as it deprives the country of its most innovative and productive individuals, leading to weakened productivity and anemic innovation. The cumulative effect of these factors could see Russia's economy shrink back to levels reminiscent of the Soviet years. The Soviet economy was characterized by its focus on heavy industry and military might, often at the expense of consumer goods and services. With the current trajectory, Russia risks a similar imbalance, with a heavy reliance on natural resources and a shrinking service sector. As we draw the curtains on today's episode of Fun Financial Insights, we've journeyed through the complex economic landscape of Russia's future. Russia's economy stands at a crossroads, with sanctions and geopolitical strategies shaping its destiny. The potential return to a Soviet-style economy, the innovation vacuum, and the brain drain are but a few of the challenges that lie ahead. The decisions made today will chart the course for the next five years and beyond. Hey, if you enjoyed our journey through Russia's economic landscape and its global implications, like the video to support our channel. Also, subscribe for more insightful content and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our financial explorations. Thank you for tuning in to Fun Financial Insights. Remember, knowledge is the currency of the future, and you've just enriched your financial portfolio.